Okay, Kat, let's take a look at this here because Susan did a really good job with her video, but let me just show you a couple more things um, that you can do with gradients because there's a lot of really cool stuff you can do in your designs with these gradients. And Susan is right. The one I use is cssgradient.io. And the reason I use this is it's the only one that I have found that allows you to change the alpha channel for the color, meaning the opacity of it. That's your alpha channel here. So you got your RGBA, A is for alpha, red, green, blue, alpha. And you see here as I move this, what is up here at the top in this bar is the representation of what you're going to get for your gradient. So you can move this back and forth and you can create transparency. And as Susan showed you, you can, of course, change things to radial as well. You can do radial on it. And then you can also, if you go back to linear, you can change the angle at which something is as well. So let's make this 270. And then we should be coming in from the left side uh, going to the right. Now, let me show you a couple examples of places I have used this. And one of them is I created this right here. This is a gradient built with the CSS, um, cssgradient.io. This is a gradient. And so all I did is I made the center part of it completely transparent and then got the black and red going to the side. And then as we scroll down, we have a secondary one here that obviously looks like some sort of a uh, sun or aura or something to that effect. And then if I recall when I built this, it's been a while, I do recall that these black borders on the outside here actually are gradients as well. So you can use it to create solid objects, whether they're in here or here on the page. And this one here, I just did a 50-50 split, it looks like. So those are some pretty cool things you can do. But then I was working with Andrea Peer a couple of weeks ago on a Tango site that she's building for a client. And let me pull this over a little bit. Looks a little, it's a little easier to look at if we make it skinnier. But as we scroll down on the page, we had some issues because we had these images, we had to use the images, and we had to figure out, well, how can we make this work? Now at the top here, I do believe I have a gradient and it comes from black and it starts coming down the page and then it gets lighter as we get into the top of these people's heads. But then what we also did is again, we had to cover up some stuff on the image. We started down here in the right-hand corner. Now in the final, we got rid of the swoopy thing down here at the bottom, but we um, started in the bottom right-hand corner and we came up at a 45 degree angle. So as we come up, so it'd be completely black down here in the corner. And then as we come up, it'll slowly fade out over the top of the image. Like I said, it's a little bit harder to see on this one. But if we come down here, we started our black on the left-hand side and we went to transparent over to the right. And the reason why we did that is there was all kinds of lights and people and stuff behind the text and we had to get rid of that. So we used a gradient to cover that up as we went across. Same thing with here, we did black at the top and then we made it go to alpha or go to, um, you know, clear, transparent, whatever word I'm looking for as we go down the page. And then the same thing here, we had this image that we were kind of stuck with. And so what I did is I took the black from the right-hand side and I faded it over this way. So what it did is it took off the edge, the crisp edge of this image, and they had a little bit of a black shadow around the outside to begin with. And so by taking off the edge, it really looks like the two of them are flowing together over the top of each other. So let me uh, show you how this works in the CSS uh, <clears throat> gradient.io. Yeah, I'll just leave my, I'll leave my big old pumpkin head up there. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's just kind of do this. I haven't done this for a while. So um, let's see what we can come up with. I'll just do this real quickly on the fly. So we're going to go, we're going to put one there at 35 and we'll put one here. Well, let's just let's put it at 60. We'll just quit messing around. So now we want to be, let me see, 60 to 100. Like I said, I forget how to do this. I think I have to put another one here in the middle because what I'm trying to do is make this part in the middle transparent. So now I think let's go to this one here and let's see what happens if we make that transparent. Okay. That may not be what I want. Let's try this one here. Let's make that transparent. Okay. So now we're starting to get a hole in the middle. It's not exactly in the middle. You'd have to you know, work your numbers to figure out where you're going to want it. But then let's say we want to do this as well. So that goes all the way out to that side. And then this here. So now we just have black on the outside and we have the clear part 
in the middle. And what we can do is we can bring this in then some, and that'll give us more dark on the outside. And in fact, let's go to this outside and let's just make that a, let's just make that a reddish color. And we'll do the same thing here. So that's red, that's red. And then in the middle, it should be dark, but I'm not seeing any dark, but this is one of those things you got to play around with. And so then we're going to come in here to radial. And now because I did radial, now we have that in the middle. So now let's Let's just change one of these back to black. There we go. Now that's black in the middle. And so what we could do is change out some other stuff. But like I said, you play around with it forever. When I built this, I, I know, you know, I was just messing around going, how can I get this to do it? And what I basically had to do in order to get this crisp edge is you essentially have to put two of these uh, stop par, 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 two of these stop points right on top of each other in order to be able to create a crisp line. So everything on the inside of it was transparent. Everything on the outside of it was a solid color and you just do a very sharp break at that point. But now let's go to your specific question, which was, let's uh, delete out a bunch of these here because you only had two of them. So your specific question was, how can we create this button that you had here? Okay, so this one right here. So uh, Susan, Susan showed you, I'm having all kinds of trouble talking this morning. Uh, you can use the color picker of your choice if you're taking it off of somebody else's site. So we'll just come over here and we will click on that. And then we will come up into here. And I think I can just paste that in then. Okay, did it work? Let me see here, yep. And then what we need to do is take these to the edges we got linear you're gonna want this the other way around and then we'll come back in choose the secondary color oops and we you always have to click outside of it in order to get it to go into effect and so there we go. We have that. We can come down to the bottom of the page and we will clip a copy to the clipboard. Now you're going to see here two different backgrounds. This first background is the default background. If for some reason your browser cannot show a linear gradient or any kind of a gradient, it will default to this backup color, the default color, whatever they call it, it will go to that. Now, I don't think there's a single browser anymore that does not show a linear gradient. So you probably don't really need that, but it's there anyway. And then the rest of this just spells out what are the colors and what to do with them. So we say here, we want a linear gradient. We want it to be 90 degrees. So from basically left to right. And then these are the colors in RGBA. So you got your red, green, blue, alpha channel right there. And we're going to start at 0% on the first one. And we're going to go to 100% on the second one. So it basically, it spells out exactly what you just did up here at the top. Now, if we click on this to radial, then it goes to radial gradient. And it says, do it in the form of a circle. And let me move this out of the way. We'll go back to our linear. But I already copied it. So now let's go into a page. And uh, again, Susan had most of what she was showing you right, but let's just come in here and let's drop in our button. So we have our button and let's just do a couple things to this. Like let's beef up that size on it. And that's really about all we have to do. And then what I want to do is I want to save it and then we will preview it because we'll look at some code in here. Let me get my page bigger again. And we're going to right click on this. Well, we're going to do Command C, and we are going to inspect this element. Now, if you come down here, and in Susan's video, she said to use L button, a class right here. You see it right there, L button. Okay, now the reason why she couldn't get the second part of her button to work when she was doing it is because the L button class is actually part of the anchor text. So you see, you got this little A right there. That indicates that this is anchor text. And so basically what it means, it turns it into a something that's clickable normally is what you have with anchor text. And so when she put in just the uh, CSS ID selector, that's what she got right here is this CSS ID selector. And I wish I could get it all on one line, but I can't. 
And so because that did not have the A in it, it wasn't going to properly choose the right element in order to put the background on. So in a case like this with a button, you always put the background onto the A element itself, not onto the outer element. And inside of ClickFunnels, most every element has at least two, if not three levels to the element. So you always got to figure out which level do you place your CSS on. So now let's go back into our page where we were working. And let me see, that was right here. So we save that. So now let's go and open up our CSS. And you would do it by coming over here, settings, custom CSS. I built myself a little bookmarklet for that. And we'll just paste in like uh, Susan did here. And uh, we'll do that. And now a couple things here. Proper syntax when putting in CSS is always to have the curly bracket on the last line by itself. You never put a curly bracket on the line with the actual text. And then what we can do is we're going to look at, let me move this out of the way. Let's take a look at this. We're gonna come down here and we're going to grab a hold of the CSS ID selector. So we're gonna grab that right there. We're gonna copy that and we're going to move this back up, we'll paste that in. And then we're going to go A, another space, and then our right curly bracket and if we pull this out of the way, there we go. We have our gradient. But as uh, Susan showed you, if you wanted to do every single one, then we could just use that class. So we could use the class of L button right here. If you wanted to do every single button on the page, have them all look exactly the same. Because again, that class is within the A tag. So here... If we use the CSS ID selector, we have to add the A tag. If you're already inside of the A tag, of course, you don't have to do that. And so we can just use L button. So in our case here, we can take this out. We can put in a period indicating a class, L button, and there you go. Stayed exactly the same in the background right there. And there you go. So I think that should answer your question. Definitely use the CSS gradient.io, play around with it. And as you saw here and here, you can create some uh, pretty crazy stuff with these gradients. So if you got any questions, just let me know.